Good morning, ladies. Are we excited? Yes! I thought so. Um, I know many of you have been studying about Dr. Jane Goodall, and we are so lucky to have her here today, aren't we? Yes! When Dr. Jane was just 26 years old, she traveled from England to Africa and bravely entered the little-known world of chimpanzees. She had nothing but her notebook and a pair of binoculars, but she quickly got the trust of the chimpanzees. The public was fascinated by her work and remains so until this day. Today, Dr. Goodall's work revolves around inspiring action on behalf of endangered species, particularly chimpanzees. chimpanzees. She travels around the world, encouraging people to do their part to make the world a better place for animals, for us, and the environment that we share. She travels more than 300 days per year talking to audiences, many of them like you, young people, and really tries to get us to understand that we can make a difference to help each other, the people, the animals, and environment. She is really, one person has made an extraordinary difference in the world, just like hopefully each and every one of you will. So we are very, very fortunate, very, very lucky to have Dr. Jane Goodall here. Do you think you could give me, help me give her a big round of applause?
problem at the beginning was that they actually ran away every time they saw me. And they got very depressed because there was only money for six months and the weeks went by and then the months and still I couldn't get really close to the chimps. And then one of them, and I called him David Greybeard, he started to, to lose his fear before the others. He came into my camp and he took some bananas. <laughs> and so my cook left bananas out for him and one day I stayed down because I used to go up to the mountains every single morning. And I stayed down and found, yes, it was this male with the beautiful white beard that I began to know out in the forest. And he got so used to me. <coughs> so if I arrived with a group and they were all getting ready to run away, well, if David Greybeard was there just sitting calmly, the other chimps kind of looked from him to me and back again. And I suppose they thought, well, she can't be so dangerous after all. So I got to know David's friends like Goliath and old Flo and Flo's family of Fabian and Figgin and Beefy and Flint. And I got to know all about their lives. I got to know how like us they are, how when they greet each other, if they're friends, they can kiss and hug and pat one another. If they're a bit aggressive, two males wanting to prove which one is top dog, they can swagger like this, shake their fist. And they also do these charging displays, hurtling across the ground, stamping with their feet, slapping with their hands, shaking branches, dragging branches, throwing rocks, quite intimidating. <coughs> and that's what they're trying to do, intimidate the other males so that they can get one up over him. So I learned how the chimpanzee family have very, very, very strong bonds. And that can last through life. Chimps can live to be more than 60 years old. And a mother and her son can remain very close all that time. And the brothers and the sisters help each other, support each other. And here's a story for you. Imagine that we're walking along a trail in the forest. And we're following two young chimps, a female who's nine years old, and her little brother, Prof. He's just three. And he's still a bit unsteady on his feet. And normally he'd be riding on his mother's back, but he decided he wanted to follow his sister, and the mother is behind us. And suddenly, the elder one, Pom, she stops, and she's staring at something ahead of her among the trail. It's a bit dark under the, under the forest canopy. And she stares at this thing, and her hair begins to bristle a bit, which is a sign of excitement or fear, or both. And she gives a little tiny, oh, ah, ah, and rushes up a tree. Well, her little brother, maybe he didn't hear that sound, or perhaps he doesn't understand it means danger. And he just carries on along the trail. And his sister, as she watches him get closer and closer to this place, every hair stands on end. And she gets this big grin of fear on her face. If you see that expression on a postcard and you think the chimp is smiling, it's fear. Because captive chimps aren't always treated very well. Anyway, Pom has this grin of fear and finally she can't bear it anymore and she rushes down, picks up her little brother, climbs back up the tree and there, coiled up at the side of the trail, is a big poisonous snake. And there was another time when a little three-year-old lost his mother. He was just beginning to be able to live without his mother's milk. But he's still very small. He was still sleeping with his mother at night and riding about on her back. And we thought he wouldn't survive because he didn't have an older brother or sister to care for him. But it was a, a young male, an adolescent male, who wasn't even related, who looked after him and saved his life. So chimpanzees like us can be loving and kind and compassionate. They can also be nasty and violent and brutal and even have a kind of primitive war, just like us. 
So it was because chimps were so like us that scientists began to think, well, perhaps we humans are not quite as different from other animals as we used to think. And today, scientists are very fascinated by the social behavior and the intelligence and the emotions of animals like elephants and giraffe and rhinos and dogs and cats and even birds. And do you, do you know what an octopus is? Do you know octopuses are very, very smart? Yes. So now if you decide that you want to study animal behavior, there is so much for you to learn out there that people have never thought about until recently. So there I was, out in the forest, finding out about the chimpanzees. And so why am I not still there? Because the best place in the world for me is to be out in the forest. But when I realized that all across Africa, which is where chimps live, the forests were being cut down. And when I realized that chimpanzee numbers were dropping because mothers were being shot, so that babies could be stolen and sold to zoos or circuses or labs. And when I realized that some of the chimps were being shot for food, it's called the bushmeat trade, I knew I had to try and do something to help. So I began talking about the problems faced by chimps. And I also began learning about all the bad things that we humans are doing to the planet. And I think you know about some of them, cutting down the forests and polluting the air with using fossil fuels and creating all this greenhouse gas, the CO2 and everything, and how our rivers are getting polluted and how we're spraying food with poisons. Kills the bugs, yes, but it's not very good for us either. So we're doing a whole lot of bad things to this world and that's why I started Roots and Shoots. And how many of you know about Roots and Shoots? Just about all of you. So you know that Roots and Shoots is about making the world a better place to save people, animals, and all the environment. And the most important message of Roots and Shoots, every single one of us, as everybody in this room, children, grown-ups, teachers, parents, me, all of us, every day, we make a difference in the world. You can't actually live through a day and not make a difference. And you can choose what kind of difference you're going to make. How you behave, do you help a little sick animal? Are you kind to another child who's crying and upset? Are you nice to your brother or your sister or your parents? Or are you mean and nasty? What sort of mood are you in? If you're in a bad mood, how do you get in a good mood? And what can you do to make this world a better place? That's what Roots and Shoots is all about. And it began with 12 students in Africa. And it's now in 140 countries. It's got about 100,000 groups. We've got members who are in preschool. It's even younger than you people in the front. But we also have lots and lots of groups in high school and university and even some adult groups. And so it's a big reason for hope because young people, when you know what the problems are and you are empowered to take action and we listen to you when you say, I think I'd like to do something to make the world a better place. I'd like to plant trees in that bare place over there. And people say, hey, that's a really good idea. Let's go and plant trees over there. And so in this way, you get to choose what you want to do. Maybe it's not a good idea, and maybe grown-ups will say, well, perhaps that's not too good an idea, but let's think of another one. And so ways that you can help animals, ways you can help environment, ways you can be nice to people, those are the kind of things that Roots and Shoots is doing all over the world. So I told you I would introduce you to Mr. H. Well, Mr. H was given to me 29 years ago. He was given to me as a birthday present. He didn't look much like this back then. He was all fluffy and pale gray, and he 
his face kind of looked like this. Um, the person who gave him to me was completely blind. He went blind when he was 21, so he couldn't see anything. And for some strange reason, while he's learning how to live in this new blind black world, he met a magician, somebody who did magic. And he decided he wanted to do magic. And everybody said to him, but Gary, you can't be a good magician if you can't see. And he said, well, I can try. And I'm telling you, if he was standing here doing his magic, he wouldn't know he was blind. That's how good he is. And at the end of his, his show, he would say to you, you know, he'd tell you he was blind, and he'd say, something bad might happen to you in your life, because we never know. But if it does, don't ever give up. There's always a way forward. And he does cross-country skiing. He dives with great white sharks in a cage, mind you. But he does skydiving. I mean, I, I think it's crazy, these people who jump out of airplanes and just hope their parachute will open. But just imagine jumping out of a plane into pitch blackness. That would be tough. But he does it. And he thought he was giving me a chimpanzee for my birthday. So why isn't this a chimpanzee? Yeah, that's right. Because he has a tail. So I told, I made Gary hold the tail. Um, and he said, never mind, take him where you go and you know my spirit's with you. So his name is Gary Horn, and so this is Mr. H, and he's been with me for 29 years, and he's been to 65 countries with me. He's a very famous monkey. You can even Google Mr. H and you'll find he crops up. <laughs> so I know that you have questions to ask, and I said that I would talk for about 15 minutes, and I will hope somebody will come and select the questions, please, because I cannot deal with hundreds of hands all up at the same time. Teachers, please, some project in science to figure out how we can help our community. First we looked at maps and then figured out what is good, great about our community. And then we found out what are some problems. We decided we wanted to help with ocean pollution. We learned about some different kinds of pollution then brainstormed how we can help. One thing we are doing is writing letters to big companies and to politicians. We will also share more about these problems with Berks as we keep going. Thank you for inspiring our project.
sister saved him from the sea. Well, the, the baby was up in the tree with his sister, and the mother finally came along, and, and um, the snake went away, so he was fine. He was safe. Grace Warner. Um, how can we save them? We have a program called Chip Guardian. And you're, if you have a Roots and Shoots group, and if you haven't, you may make one, um, you can raise some money and become a chimp guardian. And we have a big, big sanctuary for orphan chimps whose mothers have been shot. We've got 160 chimps in it. It's huge it's in Africa. And so we look after them. We put them on three big, beautiful islands. But also we are educating the people all around so that they stop hunting chimps, so that they understand how wonderful they are. So if you become a chimp guardian, you learn about the chimp, but you also help us to save the wild chimps by educating. We do roots and shoots groups over there, so you could even communicate with a roots and shoots group your own age. We'll have about two more. Alexis. What inspired Dr. Goodall about chimpanzees? Well, I'm inspired about them because they're so like us, and because even after 55 years, we've been studying them 55 years, we're still learning new things, and now we're studying the, the grandchildren, and even two great-grandchildren of that original female flow I knew so well. So all the time learning, and seeing how a good mother produces offspring who do much better in life than bad mothers. It's very interesting. Charlotte Sheridan. Um, nice big voice, Charlotte. Um, so you said that um, you traveled to three weeks on a boat. Which was, um, so where did, so you said you traveled from England, which were like, Routes you took from England on a boat. What you want to know where how she went no, on the boat? Um, what, did you stop at any countries or did you stop at any countries? Well, if you look on a map, the quickest way to get from England, UK, to Africa is to go through the Suez Canal. That's between England and North Africa. We couldn't do that because there, at that time there was a war with Egypt and the Suez Canal was closed. If we had a map, I could show you. So the boat had to go all the way around Africa. That's why it took three weeks. And we stopped in the Canary Islands. Then we stopped in Cape Town. We stopped in Durban. We stopped in what was then called Lorenzo Marks, which is now called something else. And um, then we got up to Mombasa in Kenya and then took a train to Nairobi. It went all the way around Africa. Thank you, girls. If you didn't get your question answered, don't worry. Having questions is a really wonderful thing, and you can take those with you today. And if you have questions, you could write them down on a piece of paper and give them to your teacher, and somehow we'll get hold of them and send you some answers. But before we go, I'm going to have a little lesson. We're going to have a little lesson. You've got to listen very carefully. And first of all, if I say good morning, you can answer, right? Good morning. Good morning. Bonjour. Bonjour. Good morning. Good morning. Jumbo. Jumbo. <laughs>
more will help you that, but how about one more big round of applause for that?